Yes, I know that is just a video of an empty chair, but do not touch that dial. Don't change the channel. Don't hit pause or stop or delete. That's actually going to be a very important moment, very important day, very important chair. I want you to imagine for a moment that somebody who has hurt you is sitting in that chair. Somebody that you love or somebody that you could love. What might you say? So here we go. We live in a hurting world. We have all been hurt and we have all inflicted hurt. And hurting is natural. It's part of what we do in our world. To forgive, that's supernatural. And that's the journey that we're going on. We've been talking some about Joseph and his brothers. It's the great story in the book of Genesis about hurt and then forgiveness. Let's think about the time frame for a moment as you think about people that you need to forgive or hurts or bitterness that you have and how long have they gone on and do they begin to fester? When we first read about Joseph and his journey, he's 17 years old. He has these dreams and they're the strange mixture of calling and grandiosity. And he's the favorite in the family. His dad gets him a special coat to mark him out. His brothers are tormented by that, tormented by what looks like Joseph's insensitivity to them and the way that he tattles on them and they end up selling him into slavery. And he ends up in Egypt and then he's in prison for a while. Here's what's really striking about that story. By the time he is out of prison and Pharaoh has Joseph interpret his dreams, and then elevates him. By that time, Joseph is 30 years old. He's been gone from home for 13 years. And then, if you remember this story, you might remember there are seven years of prosperity in Egypt, and then a time of famine begins, and there's two years of famine before Joseph and his brothers see each other. So there are 22 years when Joseph is gone from his brothers, gone from his father, and he does not know if he will ever see them again. 22 years. We don't know why it had to be such a long time. Maybe he needed that time to forgive. We're gonna see more about how that all plays itself out as we look at reconciliation. What I wanna to say today is, for all of us, there will be a period of time, there'll be some kind of gap, there'll be some kind of delay when I feel hurt from somebody and there's a sense of estrangement and then we're able to move together again. If we're able to move together again, maybe we will never be able to move together again. Maybe the person will die or there'll be some other block. How do I forgive? How do I let go of the unforgiveness and replace it? And that's where the chair comes in. Everett Worthington writes, an exercise that was terribly helpful in seeking to develop compassion to replace resentment of brooding and unforgiveness inside me for the other person. And I actually want to mostly read this today and invite you to enter into it. One of the most important exercises you can do in building forgiveness, as says, is this one. Uh, in fact, studies show that if you just do this simple 10-minute exercise, it will profoundly increase your ability to forgive. And the idea is that you have a hypothetical conversation between yourself and the person who has hurt you. So I want you to begin to imagine now what you might say to that person. And then you have to put yourself in that person's place in sincerely, honestly, objectively, empathically, try to think through what might they say to you. Here's an example Ev gives. Me, you really hurt my feelings when you lost your temper, started insulting me. You didn't even seem sorry. Wrongdoer. I didn't realize it still bothered you. That makes me feel bad. Me, I wish you'd shown a little more remorse. I felt hurt for days. I still get upset when I think about it. Wrongdoer. I'm so sorry for causing you pain. I was thinking about my own frustrations. It was more about me being upset with myself than about you me, then why didn't you say it? Wrongdoer, I don't have any excuse. I should have said something. Even though I didn't say anything at the time, I still think that you're my friend and I hope that you will forgive me. So that's just an example to give you an idea of it. And then the practice is that you do this. You can begin to think about it now, but I would encourage you to Take a little time on your own and actually write down a conversation like that, a dialogue between you 
and the person that hurt you. You might be able to go to them and do this um, live face to face. That would be the best also. But you start right now to be able to do that work in my own heart to begin to try to understand, not to excuse, not to justify, uh, but simply to try to understand this other person and write down, what would I say to them? And then if I don't just caricature them as they're this all evil, terrible villain, pond scum, they should die, but that they're a real person who probably didn't wake up on that day and think, you know, how could I just really, really inflict massive amounts of pain wickedly on me? What do I think they might say? And then write out those thoughts. And then this is quite important. Actually physically sit in a chair and have an empty chair there. And then say your words to that person and then physically get up and sit in that other chair and speak back to you in the voice and the mind of that other person. And I will tell you on this long journey of forgiveness for me that has been um, several months now, uh, uh, I've done this several times and at least once it's the emotionally most impactful thing. Lots of tears for me just to try to hear that voice again and uh, listen to that heart. Uh, F says, research shows that if you do this seriously, it can be the single most effective thing that you can do to forgive the wrongdoer emotionally. So take the time to do that. You can begin to think about it right now. And then just actually physically put that person in that chair and give voice to what it is that they might say so that you can listen to it and experience it and absorb it at a whole deeper level. And then after, I'm, after I've done that, I can think through some questions like, what might have been going on in this person's mind and heart that I didn't think about before until I went through this exercise? And I promise you, there were learnings for me. I came to see uh, the person, some of the people that I have felt wrong by in a different way and considered um, what these events have looked like through their eyes differently because I tried to speak for them than I was doing when there was only one chair. See, the big thing with forgiveness is, am I going to do one chair or two chair forgiveness? And forgiveness becomes real different when it's two chair because then I invite that other person as a human being to come into my heart again. Now, again, this doesn't mean that they're Um, will or even should be reconciliation. We'll talk about this more. This is forgiveness. And then I want to tell you about one other tool in the process of forgiveness that's been very, very helpful to me. We talked before about decisional forgiveness. That's where I decide uh, I am choosing to forgive. I will treat this person as a valuable and worthwhile human being. I will no longer allow myself to indulge rumination. I won't gossip. I won't try to pay them back. I will earnestly seek with God's help to replace negative feelings of um, bitterness and resentment and hostility and hatred with positive emotions like empathy or sympathy or compassion. And actually, that, that's a, it's a decision that I can make. And part of what I've learned is how often previously I would have hurt with somebody and never clearly decide to forgive them and then be on that journey to forgive them emotionally as well. So then the idea is in order to help make this concrete, get it out of vague, actually write out a certificate of emotional forgiveness. And I've got a copy of one right here. Um, I think you might see and even... Uh, more beautiful example of this that we develop online and uh, Everett Worthington's Do It Yourself Workbook on Forgiveness has this. We'll make some link available so that you can get it. But it simply says this. You can write it out in your own handwriting if you want to. Certificate of Emotional Forgiveness. I declare to myself that as of the date, and then you fill in the date, I have decided to forgive and then I fill in the name of that person. 
for, and then I fill in the actions that I am forgiving. And then underneath that, to date, I have forgiven blank percentage. And then I fill in the percent, 60%, whatever it is. To date, I have forgiven blank percentage of the emotional forgiveness. And then it's signed and I sign my name and my relationship with that person. And I will tell you that being able to say, on this date, I forgave. On this date, I forgave. On this date, I forgave. With key people and key hurts in my life. Knowing there's still a journey to go on with forgiveness. And in many, many ways, this is a journey I'll be on forever. And every day I get to practice forgiving. I practiced it today. And again, it's not that I'm going to go around and say, here, I'm giving you this certificate to show you that I have forgiven you. And maybe the other person doesn't think that they need my forgiveness at all. And I may discover, you know, a lot of what was going on here was me being overly blaming or overly sensitive. All that work is uh, out in front of me. Um, but to say, I put a stake in the ground, I have forgiven. So that's the invitation today. Go from one chair forgiving to two chair forgiving and put a stake in the ground, make the date. God, forgive us our debts as we forgive. Thanks for joining us. At Become New, we want to grow spiritually one day at a time, but it's tough to do that alone. So we're offering a little more support for anyone who would like to work on putting the content into practice. You can sign up to receive a text at the end of each week in this series, asking if you completed the here's how portion for that week. If you want, you can reply to the text and let us know how it went, or if you need prayer in taking those action steps. To sign up for the end of week reminder, just text the word MORE to 855-888-0444 and we'll put you on the list. As always, to receive the emails or video links by text, you can let us know at becomenew.com slash subscribe. If you're already signed up for the emails but aren't getting them, try checking your spam folder or better yet, you can add us to your contact list. Our email address is connect at becomenew.com. If you need prayer, we're here for you. Text your specific prayer request to 855-888-0444. There's a team of us who meet each weekday to pray specifically over every person who sends a text in. We'll catch you next time.